I'm honored to be here. And when I was in high school, I was required to do a family history report. And I interviewed my, grand my father's parents and my mother's parents. And uh, so this has been 35 years of researching my family and their experience in Manzanar. My mother's parents were um, reluctant to speak about their experience, but because of my uh, project, they agreed. I flew to Los Angeles and interviewed them. Um, and here's their story. My grandfather, Kiyotsu Kutsuchiya, uh, was born in 1900. He uh, came to the United States uh, at 16 years old in search of his father, who was working in California and apparently didn't really want to go back to Japan. So his mother sent him to the United States by himself to bring his father back to Japan. And um, in doing that, um, his dad did go back to Japan, but my grandfather ended up staying in California. And this is his suitcase right here, and there's a close-up shot. The brown picture um, it shows more visibly the fact that it says Hotel California in Japanese right behind his name. So that was his destination. Um, my, uh, in the 1920s, my grandfather made his way to Chicago um, to go to the Art Institute of Chicago. And the photo on the right um, is of him in the 1920s. And a man named George Harding met him at the Art Institute and immediately uh, wanted him to work for him. So my grandfather uh, worked at the Harding Museum which was a home house museum on the 4800 block of Lake Park, which is in Hyde Park, uh, and was the curator, uh, the lecturer, the tour guide, the houseboy, everything for George Harding. George Harding had a love of antiques, and um, this is actually the house. Um, it's no longer standing. It was demolished in the 1950s to make way for Lakeshore Drive. But the home uh, actually had a castle, as you can see, behind it. And George Harding wanted a castle to be dismantled in Europe and put together in Chicago. So, but that wasn't permitted, so George Harding went ahead and built his own castle. And there's a photo of my grandfather um, on site. Um, here is a, another photo from our collection, my grandfather uh, with Hurdy Gurdy, which was um, also there was a large musical collection, and an article from the newspaper about um, how giving tours. Um, he had a uh, he lived on site, um, worked on all of the antiques, and um, actually set up the models that um, you see there. Um, this current this collection is housed at the Art Institute of Chicago now in the Arms and Armor exhibit. In 1936, on December 7th, my grandparents were married in Los Angeles, and my my grandmother Chi was born in Sacramento and grew up in LA, and they had um, a very elaborate wedding, and I'm not sure why, but they were married on Monday, which was December 7th, 1936. Um, and if you look in the lower left corner of both photos, you'll notice that there's a signature there, and that signature is Toyo Miyatake. And he, um, I will speak about later, but he was their wedding photographer and friend. Uh, my grandparents returned to Chicago to, for my grandfather's career, and um, unexpectedly in 1939, George Harding passed away uh, during gallstone surgery. And this really um, made their future very um, uncertain. Um, my grandfather continued to work there, but there was quite, um, as you can imagine, a lot of infighting regarding who would inherit the museum and the items. Uh, and so my grandfather continued to work there until 1940, when my aunt was born in Chicago, and um, ultimately my grandparents decided to move back to Los Angeles in 1940. And my grandfather was not able to uh, find another job quite like he did here in Chicago. So eventually, in 1941, he opened a garden nursery in Cul Culver City, California. Um, this was a common practice um, and something that he felt he felt good about. Um, the last time, I, I apologize, um, I ever saw my grandfather, I did his life history. 
and I have three hours of tapes, and so this is a lot of this information is where I got um, this from. So it's really helpful to listen to him talking about these days. Um, the garden nursery, from all accounts, was very successful. Um, here's a photo of my grandfather and my aunt, my grandmother and my aunt. They had a little koi garden. It looks. Um, I only found these photos within the last year. I was pretty blown away with with the, the how nice and large it was. Um, on their five-year wedding anniversary, my grandparents uh, weren't celebrating their wedding. They were very concerned because Pearl Harbor happened on their wedding anniversary, and so then instead of um, a happy time, they were um, thrown into trying to deal with many things. And after Executive Order 9066, my grandparents, um, uh, quickly my grandfather needed to have an alien ID. He told me that it was the first time he was ever photographed, I'm sorry, uh, fingerprinted. Um, and he uh, suddenly had to find a buyer for the garden nursery. Um, he did find the buyer for the garden nursery. Um, it was the milkman who was delivering milk to my aunt and um, he sold the entire nursery and all the contents for $75. Oh. Um, my grandparents arrived at Manzanar on April 8, 1942, and the photo on the left is a pretty famous Dorothea Lange photo, um, and it really shows the um, blustery, windy conditions of that particular location. Um, and on the right is a photo of the block that my grandparents lived in, block 20, um, that is, shows um, the conditions, how cold it can be there. I've been twice, it's, it's all, all of those things. Um, upon arrival, you would uh, stuff a mattress, that was what you would sleep on and with straw. Um, and the photo below um, shows the communal toilets that uh, you, would, you would use. Um, and this photo also is taken by Toyo um, of the of the bathrooms. Uh, the mess halls um, for all of your meals, as Joe mentioned, uh, you needed to wait in line, you needed to um, have your turn, and um, really the family dynamic uh, kind of uh, changed dramatically, especially for teenagers who wanted to sit with their friends and not their family. When my grandmother arrived at camp, she wrote a letter to her pediatrician. And currently, this letter is on display at the International Center of Photography Museum in New York City um, on the Then They Came For Me um, exhibit, and I'll just read it to you. June 9th, uh, she wrote a letter to her doctor. Her doctor returned a letter, and this is the letter he wrote to my grandmother. June 9th, 1942. Dear Mrs. Suchia, I am pleased to hear from you and your fine adjustment to living at the reception center. In certain respects, Manzanar should be an ideal vacation spot. I think that you folk at the center might philosophically enjoy the high mountain valley as if it were a grand opportunity for a vacation, accepting that inadequate facilities, the dust, the wind, the flies, and such other difficulties, just as you would accept similar things on vacation, hunting, fishing, mountain camping trip in ordinary times. I'm glad that Kieko is doing well. Typhoid injections nearly always give reactions. She was fortunate to miss them. As to food, eat all the fresh vegetables you can. Make sure that all the meat and fish is thoroughly cooked. Avoiding contagious disease contacts is difficult under camp conditions, but be as careful as you can. Another thing, I do not know what sort of facilities are provided for keeping active physically and mentally, but I hope you will have a chance to work with your hands. Sewing, leather work, nurse's aid, reading, studying, walking, playing games, all of these things will prevent boredom and will add to your ready acceptance of present conditions and their enjoyment. Please write again soon and believe me, I'm happy to help you and your family and friends in any way possible. Sincerely yours, George Layton. Um, when I first read that letter, which I found in, in my mom's at my mom's house, I was so taken aback. It was it was jaw dropping. Um, but since then, I've thought more about um, the um, the way in which the government was telling. Uh, the public about the conditions, so perhaps. Um, as soon as my grandfather arrived at Manzanar, the camp director, Ralph Merritt, found out about his experience in Chicago and at the museum, and he asked my grandfather to start a museum for internees. Um, and my, this document um, did details what my grandfather did, and he wrote it. 
One hot day in August 1942, a desk piled with a few magazines, pictures from old calendars and scissors, were given to me in the corner of the superintendent's office to develop a visual resource center for Manzanar schools. Our department began with those items, a live owl, a mouse, uh, with those items, a live owl and a mouse. We collected insects to be mounted. In our early days, the walls and floors were unlined. Dust and wind blew through the open seams of our building. We worked with our coats on because the heat was inadequate. To add to our misery, the owl, the sparrow, and the snake died of cold. The mouse escaped and ate up the collection of insects. <laughs> yet, yet we were not discouraged. We wandered around the center collecting everything from bugs to minerals. After five months of hard toil, our first exhibition on December 5th, 1942 was a great success. Since then, we have held special exhibits every month. Today, we have a permanent exhibit of local minerals, plants, wood carvings, posters, handicrafts, a picture library of approximately 4,000 mounted and unmounted pictures, models, slides, diagrams, gloves, and other visual aids. We know that the day will be here soon when we will have a visual education museum of which Manzanar can be proud. And my grandfather um, was uh, head of the museum, and he hired his friend, Toyo Miyatake, to be his assistant. Um, Toyo, who took his wedding photos. Um, and Toyo is very well known to many. Um, there, there is a documentary about Toyo sneaking his camera into the camp and um, documenting uh, real life in, um, inside Manzanar. Um, the photo on the right was taken by Ansel Adams, who became Toyo's friend, because Ansel Adams also came to document Manzanar. Uh, these are two photos that are on exhibit with the letter from the doctor uh, that Toyo took, and they sh actually show the guard towers. There were eight guard towers around Manzanar. Um, there really aren't photos of those except from Toyo, um, because those photos were not to be um, distributed to the, to the public. Ansel Adams also came to Manzanar. Uh, he came four times, and if anyone's been to Manzanar, you know that that's not an easy place to get to. <coughs> Ansel Adams actually had a friend and uh, uh, employee who was uh, incarcerated, and he wanted to do something. So um, these six photos are from uh, my grandfather's um, scrapbook, and he and they're from Ansel Adams. <coughs> uh, and this quote I found. Uh, after the war, Ansel Adams uh, wrote that after photographing Japanese Americans at Manzanar, it had been one of the most profoundly moving experiences of his life. In a 1974 interview, Adams said that when referring to his Manzanar photographs, so I really think that I can go on record and saying from a social point of view that it's the most important thing I've ever done or I can ever do as far as I know. This photo, I believe, was taken by Ansel Adams. I'm still confirming that. My grandfather is standing in front of the Visual Education Museum on the stairs. Toyo is on the left. And right behind them are the posters every month. Um, this orange one is uh, to show that the Ansel Adams exhibit is coming. Um, but to take the photo of the Chicago Museum that my grandfather worked at and this barrack, there about as different as, as can be within a two-year time span. My family has these posters from the exhibits that my grandfather put together, and they are currently on display um, at Manzanar. And ironically, um, this one on the um, relocation week, um, you know, I can only imagine what those photos look like or what, what was put together for that. Here's another photo of the um, flower exhibits that they would have at Manzanar in the museum. And I found this quote um, regarding my grandfather's efforts for this story. When Mr. Suchia first initiated the program of educating people, the evacuees simply sniffed at the idea. They did not know what a visual education museum meant, nor did they know the importance of the means of informing children and grown-ups concerning the familiar and unfamiliar objects surrounding them. It was difficult to make people realize that the objects which they have never seen, if graphically presented, served as an educational purpose. Today, the story is entirely different. The museum is a popular place for the young and old. Mr. Suchia 
has less difficulty in obtaining exhibits because the evacuees find this very useful and necessary avenues for expression of their personalities and stifled ego. They have taken more cooperative attitudes and have initiated in having their creative efforts put on display. So it's, it makes me happy to know that he was able to do that. My mother was born, um, she was in Manzanar, she was one of 500 babies born there, and her birthday is on Monday. Um, she was born February 26, 1945. Um, this is another photo. Uh, because Toyo snuck a camera into camp, uh, this photo on the left of my mother and grandmother, I believe is the first photo that we really have of her. Um, and the photo on the right is inside of their barrack. Um, my, gr my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my aunt, and my uh, mom. When, at, in June 1945, my grandfather was uh, off-site out of Manzanar looking for a job. Um, and he was quoted in the Manzanar Free Press, which was the newspaper uh, for, the, for the residents, um, as saying this. June 9, 1945. Fear of the outside is the first thing that disappears from the mind once we go outside. Fear is a thing that has been the result of three years away from the world. There's no reason for fear. And that quote was there to let people know that it is going to be time to, uh, to move out and go to the outside world. Because there weren't telephones, uh, the only way for my grandfather to communicate with my grandmother and his two girls was by postcards. And I know that these are hard to read, I apologize. But um, just a week after he wrote about the fear of the outside, he got a job. And on June 17, 1945, um, this postcard says, go to relocation and have them reserve five steam line tickets to Oklahoma right away. Take the shortest route, we'll write from the destination. That was the only way that my grandmother knew that they were going to be leaving. Um, and then on June 21st, 1945, uh, he wrote to his two daughters and he said from Oklahoma, um, here I am safe and happy. I miss you both very much. Please keep your fingers crossed that we will be, be together again real soon. So from there, my grandfather went um, and got a job teaching Japanese to um, at what is now Oklahoma State University. Uh, and from there, he went on to Japan to be a translator for the war trials for the Americans, for the United States. Um, this is 1969. This is myself on my dad's knee. Um, and this photo um, kind of shows us back in Los Angeles where I was born. Uh, and ironically, this photo was taken by Toyo Miyatake's son, Archie, my family. I'm not sure why my grandparents chose a Monday to get married, December 7, 1936, and that their five-year wedding anniversary was um, something not to be celebrated. Uh, my grandmother died on, the 50th wedding an on her 50th wedding anniversary. Um, so it just continues um, to haunt me about these things and getting the word out and letting people know. In anticipation of speaking to you, I reached out to the Manzanar Museum and they let me know that a new exhibit is going to be started with my grandfather's face.